uh, let us go further on the short term scheduling so the main objective of the short term scheduling is um, to allow the um, and allocate processor time um, in such a way to optimize um, the system behavior so to optimize the system behavior so we need to look at um, different dimension the first dimension that we could look at is by looking at the um, user oriented criteria or system oriented criteria so basically um, this is the first dimension that we can um, that can assess um, that can that we can use to assess short-term scheduling so um, for user cri uh, oriented criteria it relates to the behavior of the system as perceived by the individual user or a process for example if you want to say that um, a, a certain uh, scheduling policies is good so we could look at the response time whether the response time um, experienced by the end user is sufficient or not so um, under system oriented criteria so it will focus on the utilization and the effectiveness of the um, processor so for example we would like to see the rate of completion of each of the process so this is um, the way we can assess um, any scheduling uh, method or any scheduling approach in uniprocessor scheduling another way that we could um, another dimension um, that we could use to assess the uh, scheduling um, technique or scheduling policies is by looking at their performance so um, performance can be um, assessed by classifying into two ways which is the first one is performance related and the second one is the non-performance related so under performance related it is what we usually use because um, it's easily measured and it is um, the performance is measured in the quantitative ways while non-performance are related um, usually we will um, use a qualitative measurement to measure the performance so for example for the non-performance uh, related uh, measurement is uh, predictability so what happened uh, uh, if you look in the next uh, slide so in this slide they will show um, uh, how perform how scheduling uh, policies or scheduling um, technique could be assessed in different dimensions now in this slide we will look one by one the parameter for scheduling criteria in the perspective of user oriented versus system oriented and also whether it is performance related or non-performance related so um, i will look or divide um, the criteria um, basically based on the user oriented versus system oriented so as we know the user oriented is um, criteria is the behavior of system which is perceived by user or um, a process so um, some of the parameters are the turnaround time so turnaround time is time between the process submission until um, the completion of the process so for the response time so it is the time between request submission until the first response uh, received by the users and then we have another parameter which is deadline so deadline is the um, the time when the specification of the system is met um, from user oriented perspective we could also have the non-performance uh, related criteria which is predictability where um, under predictability um, a job should run in equal um, time um, and at the same cost now let us look at the scheduling criteria in the perspective of system oriented and performance related so we can um, assess a scheduling criteria based on its throughput where um, where in the throughput we will see the number of processes um, completed per each time unit and now we can see the the, um, the performance based on the processor utilization which is the percentage of a busy state for a processor we could also assess um, the scheduling based on system oriented but in non-performance related criteria the first one is fairness right so fairness is very important because um, fairness will allow equal processing time among the processes in the operating system 
and we could also uh, look at the um, scheduling criteria whether the schedule policies um, enforce priority or not where um, higher uh, priorities um, is favored um, is favored than the lower priorities um, processes and also we could see whether the scheduling policies um, balance their resources so now in um, talking about um, priority even though um, having a priority in a scheduling policies is good but we will a priority will um, lead to a starvation problem so what is a starvation problem starvation problem is uh, when certain processes which is the process with high priorities will be a uh, favorite and the process uh, with lower priority will um, be kept waiting in the ready queue so if you look in this example say for example we have three processes which is process a process b and process c so say for example process a um, um, is um, has a priority zero the lower the number of the priority uh, the priority numbers um, sorry the lower the number the higher priority of the process so in this case um, priority zero has higher priorities process with priority zero has higher priorities than the other processes so pb also um, has priority zero while uh, pc um, has priority one so so if i were to put here so if I were to put um, in the queue, so say for example, PA has priority 0, so it will be put into RQ0, so PB is also put in RQ0. Now, PC is now is RQ1 because it has priority 1. So now the processor will select, of course, from the uh, queue with has higher priority, which is RQ0 here. So PA will be selected to be run by the processor. And next, the processor will keep uh, selecting the process from the higher priority queue. What if suddenly we have PD, uh, which priority zero? So now, even though PC arrived earlier than PD, but because PD has higher priority, so PD will be favored to be uh, to be processed in the processor. So PC, even though it arrives earlier than PD, but it will be kept waiting in the ready queue because the processor will uh, prioritize the process um, with higher priority. So that's why we said that um, um, by enforcing priority, it will lead to the starvation problem. So what are the solutions that we could do is we will, uh, one of the solution is we can allow process to change its priority based on the age of or the execution history so for example if pc um, arrive earlier than the other processes with high priority so we need to allow uh, pc uh, process c to change its priority based on its age now um, next i will talk about the selection function so when we uh, um, talk when we um, talk about scheduling policy so basically um, scheduling policies in short-term scheduling is um, CPU need to decide or operating system need to decide uh, which process to be executed next by the processor so um, to decide so we um, the decision is made based on the um, some selection function so selection function is used to determine which process a already process is selected so it, there are so many uh, combination of um, um, combination of parameters to be used in order to select uh, the process it may be based on the priority resource requirement or the execution characteristic of the process itself so um, usually in short-term scheduling we have three uh, main um, uh, main criteria um, to be or main parameter to be used in the selection function the first is the w which is the time span a uh, time span um, in system so far basically it's a waiting time um, e is the time span in execution so far so uh, um, e is actually uh, for example if if the process um, has arrived so um, up to the certain particular time so um, how long uh, how many what are the time span um, 
what are the currently time spent for the um, um, for the process um, so far okay so the process might not be completed yet um, so we just calculate based on what we have executed so far okay so and finally we have the um, s the total service time this one is the um, time that is required for the um, each process to complete its operation okay so now um, next um, we need to specify the instance in time at which the selection function is exercised so basically uh, when we talk about uh, the decision mode um, so there are two general categories which is the first one is the non-preemptive so and the second one is the preemptive so in the non-preemptive um, approach um, basically uh, process is um, is in when the process is in running state which means like for example if process A is um, currently selected to be executed in the CPU so process A uh, must continue to execute until uh, its termination or if block uh, or blocking happen so basically you cannot interrupt the operation of process A in the CPU while for a preemptive method, so if a process is um, currently running or if a process is currently in running state, so the operating system can interrupt the um, the uh, the process. So um, the decision to interrupt, or we call it as preempt, okay, the decision to um, interrupt the process or preempt. Preempt means you can um, switch or remove the the currently um, running process in the CPU and switch it with other process okay so the decision to preempt may be uh, performed um, uh, in uh, many condition right so the first condition may be when a new process arrive so this is the first condition second is when an interrupt occurs so when an interrupt occurs so and we need to like for example if the process need to call for IO so uh, we need to put the process in a block state so basically we can preempt the process and then based on the clock interrupt clock interrupt means um, sometimes in the certain algorithm they will um, interrupt um, the process at a certain time interval all right to give a fair share uh, use of the CPU um, among the processes. So um, in the next slide, um, okay, um, in um, unit processor scheduling, so there are many policies. So um, in the next slide, I will explain about different policies in unit processor scheduling uh, based on the uh, decision mode. So um, I will discuss four um scheduling policies which is first come first serve shortest process next round robin and also srt so under non-preemptive approach so um there are uh, two uh, scheduling policy will be discussed which is first come first serve and also shortest process next under preemptive approach there will be two uh, scheduling policy that will be discussed which is round robin and also shortest remaining time so this four um, techniques will be discussed in the next slide